What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video I'm going to be going over the Brewbilt X2 Jacketed Conical Unitank. Um, this is a brand new Unitank conical steel fermenter that hit the market not too long ago and um, yeah a lot of people are putting out content on it at the same time and uh, I don't normally do review videos anymore but for this particular piece of equipment I think it is valuable. To be clear though Brewbilt and by extension More Beer never actually asked me to do a review video. They never asked me to uh, say a specific thing or see the content prior to publishing it or any other stipulations whatsoever. Um, there's no money being changed hands, just the product that was sent to me. And a lot of other folks are publishing content on this at the same time. It's really just that Morbier sent us all the same stuff at about the same time, and we all generally just made content at about the same time for it. So that's how this stuff works. I hope you can see the upside to that, in that everybody has a different opinion and is picking up on different things about this product that will help you as a consumer make a more deliberate decision as to whether or not you need it. Many of you watching this video right now are automatically probably going to be like I don't need a thousand dollar fermenter and if you know that good for you because most people don't but we'll break down exactly what makes this fermenter special in this video I'm hoping to do an overview of what comes with it and how I recommend setting it up along with the accessories we'll do pros cons and an official comparison to the spike cf5 which is very very close in design to it and um, probably the most similar unit tank out there on the market so real quickly, what is a jacketed conical unitank? Well, jacketed meaning that it has this cooling jacket around the outside of it. This is a rare feature in homebrew systems. And um, in fact, the X2 is the most affordable jacketed conical for the homebrew scale out there. Affordable, of course, being a very relative term. The jacket is an enclosed space that wraps around the cylindrical portion of the actual fermenter. You usually are going to run either ice water mixture or glycol water mixture through there to efficiently cool things down. The jacket system is far more efficient and quicker than using a cooling coil or using a fermentation chamber simply due to the surface area involved. Um, and it is a pretty impressive thing when you actually get to use it for the way it was designed to be used. The conical portion of it, meaning that it's a conical fermenter, it has a cylindrical uh, portion and then a tapered cone that goes down to a port at the very bottom in which you can dump out yeast, trube, hops, whatever. Um, there's many benefits to this process which I'll cover in a different video but far and away it is the most common way that professionals will ferment their beer and that's one of the major pieces of appeal of this piece of equipment is that it does really mimic professional processes. And lastly it's a unitank which means that it is a combination of a fermenter and a bright tank. This means that you can ferment and then you can dump out your yeast tubes and hops and then you can carbonate in the same exact vessel, do a pressure transfer over to a keg and have freshly carbonated beer that you can put on tap. Um, this is a very powerful thing. Um, it means that the vessel can hold up to 15 psi and therefore can also pressure ferment at the same time if you wish to do so. So the fermenter comes in one large box that's pretty well packed overall and it includes the actual fermenter body with the legs. It includes a lid which has a four inch tri-clamp port and two one and a half inch tri-clamp ports and it also has a pressure relief valve set to 15 psi in the lid. It comes with the same lid clamp design that comes on the CF5. It also includes a sample port, a two inch butterfly valve, a blow off tube, a thermo well, and then four one and a half inch tri clamps and gaskets, one four inch tri clamp and gasket, and one two inch tri clamp and gasket. And it has plenty of tri clamp uh, solid plugs for you to plug up the holes that you're not using any particular accessory on in a, any particular tri clamp port. And lastly, the fermenter comes with a neoprene jacket, um, which is really easy to put on, and also this yeast collection flex chamber that's really very similar to what you would find on the Firmzilla. It's actually pretty much the same design, just upgraded to work with triclamp ports. I had it up and running pretty quickly within about an hour. Uh, assembly was not very difficult at all and the instructions are very clear, very easy to read and come with both pictures and good descriptive text that's not just like a badly made translation. Uh, so that was nice to see. I did have some critiques on the inside. Um, the mirror finish, which is a huge, like everyone makes a huge deal about the mirror finish on the X2. It's really not any different than the mirror finish on any other conical. Uh, so there's nothing super special about 
countdown. And secondly, I had a close look at the welds and the tri-clamps, and I'm gonna be honest, they left a lot to be desired. Now, my day job is within the aviation industry where welds really have a very high standard, and so I'm used to seeing that kind of work. Um, this was okay um, overall, but the Spike CF5 has far nicer welds. They're far smoother on the surface. They're a lot more sanitary in appearance. I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference, really one thing to the other, as long as you're good about your cleaning regimen. I didn't see any pits, I didn't see any cracks, um, but the finish work did leave some things to be desired. Now I did use the fermenter to make this. This is the Treehouse style IPA, um, which you probably should have seen by now. And I had a great experience fermenting with it. I spun it on the last half of this to check the pressure holding capability. And um, as long as you set that lid gasket in correctly, which means the rounded portion of it does not go up into the lid, the rounded portion should be facing down onto the actual rim of the fermenter, it will hold pressure without any issues. It held pressure the entire time during fermentation fermentation, but also I removed the beer uh, from the fermenter with the pressure transfer, and just for the sake of it, I left the pressure in the fermenter for another five days, and it didn't drop at all. So as long as you're setting up your gaskets properly, you shouldn't have any issues with pressure loss in this fermenter. Overall, the cold crashing and chilling performance was amazing. I, I took the fermenter from 68 down to 60 Fahrenheit in about 20 minutes with the jacket, and then I took it from 60 Fahrenheit down to 38 for a cold crash in about six hours. Now, while that was a lot of time, the first 20 degrees were done in about two hours. That's a pretty good rate, I would say. And it's far more efficient than a cooling coil, and it gives you a more accurate reading because the cooling coil cools directly the wort around the coil, much more so than the outside of the uh, fermenter, whereas the jacket does the opposite thing. And there's a lot more wort that's contained around the outside of the fermenter versus just in the middle, so you get a much more accurate read on the real temperature inside of your fermenter when you're using the jacket like this. So the fermenter, it comes in about $900 for the base kit. It's a pretty steep price, but it does include that jacketed cooling system with the neoprene insulation jacket on the outside. It has a sample port, the two inch butterfly valve, the blow off tube, a thermo well, and of course you have all of your tri-clamps and gaskets that you need for those items. Uh, it includes the yeast collection jar as well, so you get a lot in that base kit for $900. I do highly recommend buying the following items though if you want to maximize your experience. First of all, a racking arm, a inch and a half butterfly valve um, so that you have that on your uh, racking ports. A 90 degree elbow for the two inch port, which really helps a lot when it comes to dumping yeast. I don't like using the yeast collection jar. I found it very messy and unreliable. Um, so I'd much rather use a 90 degree elbow and then dump the tube into a like bucket or something. Uh, which is a lot easier to clean up and it results in a lot less splatter. It's hard to get around those legs to actually get under the ports and collect everything there that way. So I do recommend this. You can then put your two inch tri-clamp uh, butterfly valve on the end of that and it's much easier to get to and actuate. Along with that, having a two inch sight glass is a very useful thing as well because then you can actually see when you're finished moving yeast and hops through and instead you see the, it turn just a regular colored beer. That's when you stop. This really helps save beer in the process and we all want to maximize the amount of beer we get out of our fermentation. So highly recommend that. Plus you can watch fermentation going on, which is pretty cool. On top of that, I added the conical heater and this is an effective way to control the temperature because in my case, the basement's 55 degrees. Um, I need to heat it up to 68 degrees to keep that fermentation going in some cases, or if you're using Kvike, you'll definitely want that heater to keep things nice and hot for that yeast. The next big thing that's really important when you're using a conical is a CIP system or CIP ball. Usually these are things you can insert into the lid and run your clean in place. That's what CIP stands for. And this allows you to both clean and sanitize your system with the appropriate chemicals. And lastly, a two inch to one and a half inch tri-clamp reducer. A two inch port's great for dumping trube out, but it's really not that pragmatic when it comes to uh, just general usefulness because then you have to buy a bunch of two inch accessories and the one and a half inch stuff doesn't fit on it. So buying this reducer allows you to use your inch and a half stuff 
on your two inch port. Uh, so that's a really nice thing and that's about $17. So overall, the total breakdown of everything with the accessories comes out to about $1,165. So now let's go for the pros and cons here. I'm gonna start with the cons actually. Uh, so we, number one, have that lack of racking arm. I'm not a fan of that. Uh, the seven gallon fermenter has some incredibly close spaced ports and this makes putting on your tri-clamp accessories such a huge pain. Um, I have spent so much time trying to find the right orientation to get everything in because there's only a one very specific way everything fits together and it is nearly impossible to get all that stuff on um, in a quick and efficient manner. And when you're always taking stuff off to clean those accessories and those tri-clamps and those gaskets, you have to do this a lot and it gets real annoying real fast. So the seven gallon version is certainly way too crowded down in the cone. Secondly, the thermal well location, which is in the yeast tube cone. It's a trade-off. I understand the design trade-off with this one because if you run the thermal well through where it should be, which is about halfway up the cylindrical portion, um, you're gonna go through the jacket, which is gonna give you a false reading being much cooler than the actual fermentation. So they had to put it in the cone. However, that means now you're measuring the temperature of the yeast in the tube cone and not the beer. It should be relatively similar, but it is kind of a frustrating thing to work around sometimes. Next, there are some accessories I mentioned that you have to buy on top of the racking arm like that 90 degree elbow to make things a little bit easier. That should be included, I think. Um, I understand they want to use that flex chamber and push that instead. Um, so kind of to each your own, but in my eyes, that's a con. The upgrades to the system are relatively expensive. They're not as expensive as Spike's upgrades, but they are still relatively expensive. Another con, uh, the welds, like I said, the finish work leaves a lot to be desired. Another one, there's no handles on the fermenter at all. I understand you're not gonna be picking up a full fermenter most of the time, but even moving around the empty fermenter, we should have some handles. Um, it's bulky, it's annoying. Uh, it's not like it's easy to just bear hug this thing and move it around. So having handles in there really should be a thing that should be looked at for the X3. So next, that lid clamp that goes around the outside, in my case, does not have any room for additional tightening. Um, this might be just a function of the one that I got. I don't know if this is a production issue, but it bottoms out when I tighten it fully to the point where it holds pressure. Now it holds pressure, which is great, but this thing is gonna stretch over time. It happened at the CF5 and they built in extra length on the threads so that it would not necessarily be a problem as it slowly loosened and uh, you could crank it down further each time if you needed to. This one is not gonna have that that length of life really um, and it's gonna become a problem later. So again, might just be mine. I'm not sure if it's a continual thing, but um, it's not a good thing. And then lastly, that two inch dump port is great for flow rate, but you don't get that much of a difference in flow rate over an inch and a half. Same thing is true of the Spike CF5. They both make a big deal about the two inch dump port. All this does is make you buy a bunch of two inch tri-clamp accessories, which you can't use anywhere else unless you use this reducer. So kind of a moot point, kind of a selling point, um, I guess, but it doesn't have any gained value over an inch and a half and ultimately ends up in probably wasting more beer at the end of the process. So now let's go for the pros because there is a lot of stuff in this particular fermenter that makes it well worth your money. First, this having that second tri-clamp port in the lid is great because now you have the option to do multiple things at once. You have a four inch for putting in yeast or putting in hops or whatever. You have two inch and a half tri-clamps, which you can use for pressure fermentation. You can use for adding a uh, hop dropper combination in there. You can use one for a blow off tube. You can use one for a CIP ball, the other one for an open vacuum. You can do a ton of stuff with it. So that's pretty cool to see. Having a PRV in the lid is a great thing as well because that PRV V allows you to quickly and easily release pressure without having to worry about having a separate bleed valve somewhere else on the system. Uh, this is a good safety measure. Speaking of safety, the labels on the, this particular item are highly visible and uh, that's a good thing, especially because pressure fermentation and using a unitank in its design capacity can be rather dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. So make sure you're reading those labels. They're very obvious, they're very big to see. That's a good thing to see, that sort of proactive safety step being taken. The cooling jacket, biggest pro in this thing in my opinion. 
it's unbelievable the performance this thing has. Because of the surface area involved, we're getting very, very steep cooling curves, which means that we're able to cool everything down in mass very quickly, which is not an easy feat. So that's a great, great thing to see at a homebrew scale. Having that capacity to maintain good fermentation temperatures is very important. The neoprene jacket design is great. Um, you actually basically wrap it in and Velcro it around the legs, which means that you can take it on and off of the fermenter as you wish without taking the fermenter and turning it upside down or taking the legs off. Uh, so that's a great design and it's very effective. It fits snugly. It's not perfectly tailored to the fermenter, but it works well and it meets its intended design goals. Having four legs on this thing is great too. It's far more stable than the three-legged CF5. I don't know what it is about three legs that makes it more stable according to them, but that's just not true. In my experience, it's been very tippy. In my case, using the X2 with its four legs was far more stable. And then you can also use the adjustable feet to get it to be perfectly level as you need to. Um, and, and I found myself even just pulling on it and tipping it forward intentionally so I can get the most beer out of it when I was transferring and it had no problems going back to right where it was before and being stable. So the four legs is great. This also sits a bit higher off the ground, which is nice. You don't have enough height necessarily to transfer into a keg via gravity. You still will need to either put leg extensions on it or put it on a table in order to do that. But it has good height overall, which means you can actually mount a uh, vertical sight glass on the bottom of it if you wish to. It can easily do a half batch because that thermo well location is much lower down. Um, it may not necessarily be able to cool the half batch as effectively as the full batch batch because of that surface area involvement, but it's still very much capable of fermenting a half batch if you wish to do so. And lastly, some of the upgrade kits are actually rather innovative. Brewbilt and More Beer are kind of leading into the partners of Kegland and their designs from the Firmzilla line uh, to really bring in some interesting techniques with their flex chamber and with the pressure pack and stuff like that. I was sent those things, I didn't try them out yet, but it is an interesting way of doing things. There's a lot of interesting potential upgrades that can be added to the system to make it have some extra functionality. And then I think the final section here to talk about is comparison to the CF5. Undoubtedly, this is a very similar design, like strikingly similar. Um, and there's some things to talk about with the two fermenters when we do a side-by-side -side comparison. So a couple of the big differences between the two systems that I noticed, first of all, price. So with a fully loaded X2 with all the accessories that I mentioned, heating and cooling capacity comes into about $1,165. A fully loaded CF5 with the exact same accessories, the exact same functionality comes in at about $1,204. So less than a $100 difference between the two is still relatively competitive, but there's differences in the base kits and what you get with the base kit of each fermenter. Secondly, the spike products are made in the USA and the brew builds made in China. So that will matter more to some folks than others, but there are some obvious differences, I think, in finishing quality and weld quality we discussed earlier may or may not be related to those manufacturing origins. I'm gonna let you guys as consumers be the judges of that. However, that matters to some folks, so I am gonna definitely mention it in this video. Next, the Brewbilt's jacket design, not the jacketed cooling part, but the neoprene jacket insulator, um, is far better than the CF5. You can add it or remove it without taking the legs off and turning the fermenter upside down, which means if you needed to take it off in the middle of fermentation, for whatever reason, you could. So that's a good thing to see. But on the other note, the Brewbilt's cooling jacket is far more efficient and quicker than the Spikes TC100 cooling coil. So even if you're using glycol, you're gonna get a big difference in cooling speed between the two systems. And lastly, the Brewbilt has that extra inch and a half tri clamp port in the lid and the PRV built in. So up to you how you wanna use those, depending on what configurations work best for you. However, that is a difference. Um, with the cost and the base kit in mind, five gallon batch oriented fermenters. The base kit for the brew is $900. The base kit for the CF5 is $600. Used to be $500. And the main difference between the two is that you get more temperature control options with the brew built. You get that cooling coil germane to the kit. You get the neoprene jacket and all that stuff that comes with it. The spike on the other hand has things like the elbow and the extra butterfly valve and stuff like that. It doesn't necessarily have the temperature control options. So there are slight differences there. What I would recommend if you are stuck between these two fermenters is if you want a reliable fermenter that is going to get you the functions of a conical unit tank, 
go with the Spike CF5 base kit, it's gonna save you a bit of money. If you want the best possible temperature control, and you want to use that jacketed functionality and you already have a glycol chiller or an ice water chiller or something like that go with the brew built because you're going to get more functionality out of that instead roughly 300 dollars difference between the two base kits i think it makes up and evens out in different departments which is going to matter more to some folks than others so at the end of the day it's just another fancy piece of home brewing equipment right well, sort of. Um, I do think that those features that it has do set it apart from the competition in a certain way, and it's worth the money for that, if that's what you really want with your brew house. And I think it's a competitive price for the rest of the market uh, in which it sits in. Now, whether or not you need this sort of thing is ultimately up to you. As I've said many times before, and I will continue to say, you don't need this stuff to make good beer. You can make excellent beer with a plastic bucket. It comes down to your skill as a brewer. Conical unit tanks are cool. They're shiny, they're expensive, they're blingy, they're um, cool ways to show off, I guess. But they also add a lot of functionality and they add a lot of convenience factor and allow for some extra consistency, I would say. But overall, they come with a cost, not just monetarily, but also in cleaning. You have to take all of those parts apart. You have to sanitize them, clean them carefully, and then put them all back together. You have to use non-foaming sanitizer with them and CIP if you wish to do so that way. Um, there's a lot more technical stuff that goes with them, which may or may not be worth it to some people. These types of expensive pieces of equipment do not make better beer for you. You, as a brewer, must develop the skills to make better beer. You're always going to make better beer with good skills in a plastic bucket than little skill and a fancy piece of equipment. So keep all that in mind and do your best to balance that out and determine what you need for your own budgets and your own desires as a brewer. Anyway guys, I hope this video is useful. I hope people um, can get some extra insight into this piece of equipment if they're thinking about buying it. Don't hesitate to ask questions about it. Don't hesitate to reach out and ask me if I tried a certain thing or if I've had a certain experience with it over time. You always will have that option with me. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and comment down below. If you own an X2 or an X1, what have your experiences been like? Uh, do you agree or disagree with my statements? Let me know. Subscribe if you haven't already as well, and also if you want to support the channel, please consider picking up some merchandise like this t-shirt. You can find this and many other designs in the merchandise store in the description box. I also have Patreon. My Patreon supporters have been a huge help in upgrading the production quality of this channel. I also have channel memberships, and you can hit the super thanks button if you feel inclined to help out that way. All of those things are greatly appreciated and go back into the channel. I also have an Amazon store where you can find all of the equipment that I use and recommend um, if it's on Amazon. Check it out. And if you want to follow me in more than just YouTube, I'm also active on Instagram and Facebook as The Apartment Brewer. So feel free to check those links out as well. Anyway, guys, if you're still here, thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this one and found it useful. And until the next one, cheers.